the mighty and resilient Merrimack River, carving through the communities of our great region. My name is Linda Lorden, proud president of Merrimack County Savings Bank. And like the river that serves as our namesake, we're a constant yet ever-changing presence. Because to us, it's bigger than banking. It's about powering communities and putting people first. It's about knowing where you came from and where you're going. That's Merrimack style. Visit us at themerrimack.com. Hey moms, looking for some lighthearted guidance on this crazy journey we call parenting? Join me, Sabrina Kohlberg, and me, Andy Mitchell, for Pop Culture Moms, where each week we talk about what we're watching and examine our favorite pop culture moms up close to try to pick up some parenting hacks along the way. Come laugh, learn, and grow with us as we look for the best tips and maybe a few what-not-to-dos from our favorite fictional moms. From Good Morning America and ABC Audio, Pop Culture Moms. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. You know, we create space for what truly matters, family, business, growth, and personal well-being. Those are all very important to us. We know how important health is. Health is wealth. If you don't have your health, you have nothing. Uh, no. Ooh, that's better, right, babe? Yeah. She founded an architectural concrete company. He founded a hundred million dollar clothing company. She took the world by storm as a social media star. He took the world by storm as a famous serial entrepreneur. Together we started a business. And had babies. Now we're figuring out the best ways to do both. Join us as we learn from other entrepreneurs going through the same life struggles. As they share their life hacks about success, love, kids. And everything in between. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Quote by Abraham Lincoln. See, believe, see, could, so she did. Welcome to the Pretty and Punk Podcast. My name is Dan Caldwell, and I'm here with my beautiful wife and co-host, Ildiko Ferenczi. <laughs> Last week I said it for you. I let you say your whole name today, and I see the big smile on your face. You're so happy I did. And we have another great podcast today. (laughs) You were so angry last week on last week's podcast. Well, I thought you were trying to make excuse for like losers. No, I'm not trying to make no excuses. I'm trying to bring up an alternative point. I can't help it. I was brought up. You were so mad. All everybody was saying, all the comments were, how mad was Ildiko this week? There was no comments. You were so mad. You were so mad. Yeah, read the comments. Everybody was saying how mad you were on the podcast. I'm passionate. I'm passionate. passionate. And the worst thing... They all felt sorry for me is what it was. The worst thing for me to do... To sit in a room and not say anything, and I thought you're just trying to make excuses for for failing because we live in a time. I and and my mom and my friends and the people that we surround ourselves with, they talk about how lucky we are living in a time like this. Now, Absolutely. if the internet goes down, there definitely could We're be some screwed. kind of problem, <laughs> but. Right now, there are people making money in their sleep if they create the right thing and they are helping people solve problems. The problem is, is that there's a lot of people out there that are blaming other people for the problem problems that they have. And rather than do personal inventory, they'll blame their parents or they'll blame an ex-girlfriend or boy. They, they, I just, I cannot handle people that blame or the entitled, I cannot handle people that, that are entitled. And I don't disagree. And, oh, I need this and give me that. No, okay. no. Figure out how to fix it. My mom did not, I mean, if I felt sorry for myself, there was no sympathy. There was no sympathy. So I ver- she very quickly snapped me out of that feeling sorry for myself. And I had a lot of things happen in my life. I had a lot of traumatic experiences. I could blame, you know, my father for not being there, but that's a weak a weak thing to do. 
So yeah. I don't know. I no, just thought I you that. were trying to make excuses for people and like, you were oh, mad. we're just in a like, bad you didn't time. Talk to me the rest we're in of the a night. bad time. <laughs> And I'm like, Dan, we're living in the best time. And it takes, sometimes it takes skills. It takes a lot of prayer to figure out what to do. But I came from a family with a single mother that built, that built her equity up to 27 um, properties at one point. Okay. She didn't, she wasn't in a home because she said, never put me in a home. I'm not going to go into a home. And here's the beauty of it is when she couldn't do stuff, I took care of it for her and I didn't really talk about it. Yeah. You know, I'm dealing with that now. It cost me over $200,000, but that was my decision and I made the investments And that was something I paid for because I wanted her to, she sacrificed so much for me and other people too, other people that will never acknowledge it. And, and, but she sacrificed so much and she deserved to be a queen and to, you know, live her life like a queen. And I just, all I could hear was my mom in the background <laughs> when you were starting it, but it's so hard. Everything's so yeah, expensive. That's not what I was trying to say. And I, I think maybe a, a little bit, I just, it really triggered me because I never want anyone around me. Like I'm a good friend. And if the people around me don't call me out, all my friends have the courage to call me out and push me to be better, better. But if there's people that say I'm say I'm not being my best in my marriage or whatever, whatever it is, if my people around me are just being nice and yeah, Eldico, you're right. You're right. No, I want honesty. I need that honesty and I need that tactical advice from someone to lean into. And I don't want so, yeah, you know, oh, you had such a hard life. Just no, 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 thank you. So, so I got a little bit triggered. I get it. I, you were I triggered. triggered. You, you were, you didn't talk to me the rest of the night. You were like mad at me. I was I'm like, like, I'm just wow, bringing up a point. He's going to make it. I'm trying to bring don't up a point. Don't make excuses for people to I'm fail. Not the making whole any, I was trying to bring up a point. Is to push people. Okay. Just to ignite that fire within them. And, you know, honestly, get down to that, that level where if you have nothing left, don't go to that victim mentality because we are, what are we created in? We're the, we, cre- we are created in the image of God and he is amazing. And we have royal blood, all of us, every single one of us. And when we feel like, you know, things aren't possible or we want to blame, get down on your knees and just, and just pray. I mean, that's my only advice. My mom, I caught her so many times Talking to the good Lord. Well, and yeah. I mean, if you if you're not accepting your bl- if you're not seeing your blessings in your life, yeah. you're not going to be given more blessings to deal with. But also learn from those hard times. Learn from. Don't turn it into woe is me and sympathy. Really look for the lesson in it. Look for the lesson. If you don't understand, there's a lot of things that I still don't understand that I'm still learning, and I I don't I don't want to say that I'm perfect at every at everything. I I'm I'm not. I'm still learning. I'm still growing in so many ways, but I know that I've become this new person over and over and over again in my life and it's okay to do that. It's okay to evolve and become something something different, something great. We all have beauty within us and um and especially as parents, we have this responsibility, you know, to, to really work hard and, um, and do everything we can in our power. <laughs> so if you guys want to listen to episode 187, 187, <laughs> you know what 187 means in cop talk? It means, no. That means murder. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to hear okay, me well, get murdered in 187, episode 187, Stop go back and listen. Oh I forget the name gosh. of that, what we called the episode. Something about no excuses. 
And uh, it, it, it's um, don't you be can hear weak. Ildiko get really passionate for that episode. Anyways, we got a new episode. It's about the power of no. And before we jump into that, we're going to jump into this. Hey guys, we hope you're enjoying today's episode of the Pretty and Punk Podcast. And if you are, and you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button, it just takes a second. It means so much to us because it really helps the podcast get out there to more listeners like you guys. And if you know anybody, it might help and you can send it to them. We really appreciate that too. We also love and appreciate your reviews. Even the babies look forward to them every day. If you share this episode on social media today, don't forget to tag us. We want to celebrate you because we know it's not easy being a parent in business. And the way that you juggle things makes you a superhero. That's worth a shout out. Together, we have a community of our personal followers as well. And we just want to put it out there. We want to show everybody that this juggle is possible. And you are our family and we're so proud and grateful to have you a part of this family so don't forget the all the links are below in the show notes and thank you again and let's get back to the show and you know it was also 3 a.m i'm not good late at night i need sleep anyway to this episode as parents and Many of us, like as entrepreneur parents, we often feel like we have to say yes to every opportunity, every request and every task, whether it's in business or at home. But saying yes all the time leads to burnout and stress and ultimately not giving our best to the things that truly matter. Do you agree? Yeah, I think that um, we we have to, I mean, I'm not the best at saying no all the time no, either. You're not. I mean, but I used to get <laughs> no because of your the thing is the the push pull that you're that you're dealing with is that you're building a business. We're all mm. building businesses, right? And we're right. we're trying to always keep our eyes open for opportunities. You're mm. always looking for the opportunity to get your foot in a door or get placement somewhere, or make something happen. So people come to you with ideas all the time, especially like I'm telling you, there's nothing like when your company is you know on a trajectory straight up. To have a million people coming at you. I mean, yeah, I had people when we were building Tap Out, I had people coming to me about, you were with me, when somebody was coming to me about building a restaurant, you know, they wanted to build all these nightclubs and restaurants, Tap Out restaurants, and somebody came to us about building, um, I remember this this uh, fair, fa- fairly powerful company, people, a people, and a group of people come to came to us about starting a tap out fight league like UFC Mm -hmm. and we're like you know we already have all the we're concentrating on building the best clothing company in the world and we did not have that on our room on our plate to do that and we had to and you know we needed to say no and thank goodness we did yeah because if you start saying yes to th- just well, the, every that, opportunity, yeah. you will eventually, eventually do nothing well. It, well, that's true. And also, I love where we are right now in our lives because at that point, it was like yes to some coffee shop or this or that or or no. or But it just wasn't even in our alignment, some of the things that we said or yes to, or some things that you said yes to. And I'm like, why would you even do that? And I love where we Sh- are shiny now. Object syndrome. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's just like, and sometimes you're just, you have sympathy or you're trying to help someone out. You know, it's a bad idea, but you did it anyway. And then you wish you could go back, but you can't go back now. Now you're in it and you know, it's a waste of money. You see it going and it's just painful. But I love where we are now because we have this niche. We have this niche where the real power lies in saying no, because when we say no to things that we very clearly see don't align with our goals or our values, which are so clear right now, You know, we create space for what truly matters, family, business, growth, and personal well-being. Those are all very important to us. We know how important health is. Health is wealth. If you don't have your health, 
you have nothing. You have nothing. And that's Absolutely and that's what's so nothing. so important is And if that, you don't have your fa- like sorry, but just real quick to wrap it up, if it doesn't include if it's pulling me away from my family or you away from my family, your family or you know, it's pulling me away from my spouse and I'm going to spend most of my time, you know, not in, uh, that's going to uh, burden our, our marriage. Yeah, yeah. And I and feel the we, podcast and sponsorship deals and, and just everything is in alignment right well, now. Well, that's why you, when you create Other an outline that, around what you want to do and you're yes, very clear about that. Yes, like, now we know. And you write this I- down. Immediate no. And immediate I think we're just, no. we're in a different part of our life. Yes. Where, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, if I wanted to, if I was going to go create a business, you know, well, I was a tap out, a perfect mm-hmm. example. Yeah. I was in over a few years time, I was in Japan, China, uh, Germany, uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, everywhere, mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia, Sweden, everywhere. Yeah. I was flying all over the, and when we first met, I was flying all over the world mm-hmm. all the time. And I'm, you know, that's I wouldn't be in a place like that today. I would not do that today. I would not take on something like well, that today because I wouldn't. It's easy to say no for me because yeah. when someone comes to me and says, oh, yeah, we're going to do this and we'll fly to this and go here and do this. And unless I can do that with my family, if it's, you know, if it's not I was just something that say, I can do with my family, I, I don't want to do it. I was just going to say if you can integrate, like for me, it could be a unique and different idea um, maybe even, you know, building tap out or whatever. Yeah, but, but we, I don't, if we don't warn each other out. It would have been no, no way. No, I know. We I was tired. I'm everywhere. Just, uh, oh, I was New York yeah, to yeah. Florida to no, Japan. Yeah, I'd I've, be on a flight to yes. the UK in the middle of the night. You know, it was like, there's no way we could have right, done that as right. a family. Right. On a smaller level, on a different level, if it would have been like, oh, every once in a while, See, every few months. But this but, is where the podcast is perfect because you have these... Um, you know, the sponsorships where, hey, come to Hawaii and talk about our hotel, do your podcast there, talk about the experience. How would this be for other families or or wherever, somewhere else in the world? We just got an invitation to, to Italy, to this gorgeous home um, that a lot of influencers are going to, but they invited the whole family. So this is something they want us to talk about and experience. And I don't know when we're going to have the time to do it, but it's not a no, it's a yes, because it's adding value to our family. Um, it's going to help someone because I'd like to do a giveaway. And again, again, there was a another amazing um, vacation. We didn't really talk about because we had some some family things come up. We're okay, but we had some family things come up that we're still dealing with. And um, I was just so it was an immediate yes because the um, the women that have this Airbnb in this. Uh, luxury space out in the woods. I just see it being so beautiful, not just for our family to experience and so much value that I, I know this for a fact because the one thing I don't forget for our family is the traveling memories, the vacations. And there's a lot of families out there that cannot afford to go, or they just don't even have the time to go. And I want to be able to just give this, this gift to a family because it's something that is engraved in your and your children's uh, core memories and it is so special. So these types of things and it works for yeah, us well, with those the things podcast. Fit into it's a our, yes. our family and it's not all the time plan. and it's not a rush rush situation. Cause I know with the tap out thing with you and I, I was like, I just, I just want to rest for a minute because it was, it was, we have to be here. And then next week we have to be there. So we'd be going to the fights, but we didn't really get to explore or spend time 
in the location. And sometimes we would be flying hours and hours and hours and traveling. And I really want to go to the amusement park and I want to go on a roller coaster well, with it, you. It got to the point and where you're we like, leave, no, I had to allowed. leave you at some point because there were things that you, well, like we went to the Tony Robbins event in Florida. Yeah. And I literally had to fly out and uh, where was I going? To Saudi Arabia. And I literally had to leave you there at the uh, at the event. And I felt missed, so like, bad for day. you because that was the best. I know it was a best, great event. The best, honestly, it was, that, it was it, the business master that changed my life. And that declaration that I did that day, and I wish you were there, but that was what changed my life. And I don't think Tony even knows, but that was that was the day I wrote the letter to my unborn child that I wasn't able to have for years and years and years. It was when he said to, you know, really pray for something that is impossible. And I said, I challenged, you know, my, myself and, and, and God, if this is meant to be, and just like, it happened. It happened. Here I am, my mama. (laughs) It's so amazing. So Yeah. yeah, anyway, um, so so yeah i mean i just if you have that family plan set up or the business plan and exactly what fits into that sense, if it doesn't yeah. fit it becomes no and yes become easy mm-hmm. because if it fits in that plan then it's a yes and mm-hmm. if it doesn't it's a no and it has to be a hard no and really look at it because i'm i'm going to be straight up honest people are getting People are getting divorces right now like it's nobody's business. The devil is working really hard. He wants those girls to go on those girl trips. He wants those guys to go on the guys' trips. And he wants people to slip up. And people are getting divorces. Yeah, a lot of good people we know that didn't say... (laughs) <laughs> that should have said no to no. some things, didn't say no, right. and now they're in a divorce. Yeah, if it doesn't pull you closer to your spouse and your family, you know what the answer is. You know it in your gut when it's happening. You know, are there people in your workplace that you, do you need to change jobs? Are you strong enough? Do you have those people in the background feeding your marriage or trying to pull you guys apart? And you if, know, you if you don't, if you don't say no t- to, to support your marriage, then that's, 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 that's the first time. See, when you put your business first and, and, and don't get me wrong, it, you know, I, I, I have these inner arguments with my own self about I think everybody does, business yeah. is important too, because you, you don't, if you, you don't want to miss that opportunity. Yeah. yeah and you got to put that bread on the table. But if so, it, is it ego driven? Are you... I feel like right now. Well, you, I think that's not the question. I think the question is: no, Is it going to damage your success, marriage? Success, is success. it going to damage your family? Is it going to? Are you asking too question. much of your family? If you ask that question and you say yes, then you absolutely should not be doing it, yeah. whether it's going to help your business or not. Yeah. What you need to do is find like where is what can you do or what what are you know what are you getting asked to do. And can you include your family in that to make it a family thing? Or I think if you can't, is it okay? Can you do this without it, without repercussions to your family? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's true. I'm, I'm really, I'm studying something about, uh, like the for sure breakdown of a relationship, um, marriage and a lot of it is this simple like connection it's so much deeper there's so many different levels and we can have a different um podcast about it because it's very interesting but the connection the connection is the most important things and sometimes like little fights um come up and it turns into big things but you're not connecting the way one spouse or the other needs you to connect and just connection. So it's it's so important. So if it's pulling you guys apart, um, if it's pulling you apart from your children and remember guys, they say, they say when you blink, the moment is over with your babies, like you're going to miss all that. It's true. But I didn't because I chose so carefully when I had the babies to be with them all the time. I don't, I didn't want to lose that. 
No, and that it, was good. I mean, it, it's what, and it, we were on a, you know, it was a, it was a tightrope walk for sure because I was, I, it allowed me to do what I needed to do during that time, you know, mm-hmm. to, to work on the business at that time. But yeah, but was, you were there. It was hard we on both it of us. Very... It was hard on both of us. When? Well, oh, just when, when you I went, was, well, all, that all the, one time times. when you went to go do that business opportunity, but that wasn't very long. But and even you were the miserable. Times, you hated it. There were a couple other businesses when I was still doing tap out and I was still under contract for t- with tap out and I was still traveling a lot. Not and, when I had babies. Though. No, no, no. Never that was before. Then. No, just our relationship. Oh yeah, that was that was straining. I I think I was almost done. Yeah, that's why you know when it came to an end, when my contract was over, it yeah. felt like that was the right time. You know, it was time for it to I be think, over. <laughs> I tried to leave you so many yeah. times. I, I I love this well, quote how by. Did that not, that it's so funny how it all. It I mean it, God we has do, his own timing. We could do a podcast on that, but I was just I was there. It was. It was, we had some hard, we really did have some hard times and well, I was not ready. Not to mention we lived in different and countries. And we had outside. We lived in different countries. Outside was, influences too. Like, and I was just like, I don't need these people. Yep. Yeah. I'm done. Like I am done, bro. Like I'm done. Did you just call me bro. I, did, I was done. <laughs> done. Listen, I, I love this quote by Warren Buffett. Oh. And this is an important quote because we, we, um, you know, we have this, business the billionaire collection and it, we had these oh, le- this that. great letter from Warren That's Buffett true. from 1977 where he was he was being asked to start a business with somebody and uh, they wanted him to start a new newspaper I believe it was and he he politely says okay. I have too much on my plate I got all these things going on yes. and I do I don't have time to do this in my life right now and he has a great quote and of course he says no right but I, I love the quote that he has. The difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. Yes. And that's just, it's a true thing, you know, and as I get better and better at that in my life, yes. which I think I'm a lot better at it today than I was 10 years that ago. That was one of my biggest turnoffs, to be honest, of the yes, because you have a big heart and I feel like a lot of people were trying to take advantage of that. And I was like, if I can't, I can't do this. Like I can't, I can't do this. But also I grew up with a single mom. Well, that it was, had a, to it was say a lot no of things. Lot. You know what I had been, I, you know what I think it was just going back to analyze it is I had been so busy. Like imagine flying all over the world, doing this, building that, starting that meetings here that when all of a sudden it ended, I felt like I was not, I felt like I was not doing anything. Right. Like I did, I was I, I, like, I and need to be busy. And everything wasn't clear like it is now. And so when I had God somebody. God made it very ca- clear. Well, There's yeah. a spotlight now. But like, when somebody came to me about a business, I was like, yes, I, I would jump. I need to be busy. I need to be building something. I could do three of these things. No, I mean, it was like no, a layup, you know, to build no, a business at that no. time because tap out had kept me so I think busy. You needed to lose some money, and that was the. Oh. That, yeah, that was rare. Yeah, a <laughs> couple hundred there, with the wrong hundred there, wrong three hundred there. Yeah, it's like you need to you need to feel that a little yeah. bit and go. Okay, slow down. Yeah. You you need to concentrate, and this isn't just showing up like it was before this you have to you have to concentrate and make sure let's that because you learn real quick um i'll never forget this military guy telling me that um you know today we would all be speaking german if hitler hadn't spread his forces like he did and yeah charles charles told me that and um it it really says that you know, if he would have, if he wouldn't have kept saying yes to yes, let's put soldiers there and put soldiers there. We unfortunately we'd all probably be speaking German right now. Right. And lucky, luckily enough, he was uh, he couldn't say no, and he just wanted to take over everything right now. And he spread his forces too thin, and we ended up beating him on all fronts, or on, on most of the fronts, the fronts that were important. And that's something that always sat with me. And I always remember that in business. Yeah, and if you, you have apply to that so to your clear. business and to your life, mm-hmm. that you need to say no or you won't win. You say yes mm-hmm. to too many things and you're going to be spread thin. 
and it's somehow it's not going to, it's just not going to be pretty. It's not going to work out. Yeah. And you have to be so clear, not maybe you have to be clear and say no, because the truth is that saying no, it's a growth tool and it's a strategic tool for growth. This is the facts. Each time you say no to a task that doesn't move you towards your goals, you're actually saying yes to, um, you know, just all the things. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I'll just say on top of that so we can keep it here. Uh, the, Sorry, I just uh, laughed. <laughs> Oh, I thought boy. the door Did was you opening. Space cadet or what? Yeah, the door opened and okay. I thought the little one was coming, coming in. in. I've so, totally lost my thought. You know what I, I um you know, and, and I know what you were starting to say. Somewhere it got lost in translation there, but Steve Jobs, when he came back to Apple in uh, what was it like 95, 97, somewhere around there, when he came back to Apple to um to you know to kind of you know his big comeback, um I remember uh, he gave a speech where he said, um, where he was talking about, people were asking him about, what about this and what about that? And he was trying to clear all these things that weren't yeah. working. Yeah. At, you know, like they were building a, a, like they were trying to copy Palm Pilot and build this little Palm Pilot <laughs> thing that didn't work. And mm-hmm. they were trying to do this that that was half as good as this, as this other company that was doing it. And mm-hmm. he was very clear about that. He says, Apple's not doing a good job at this. And it does a, it's our product is half as good as their product over here. Mm-hmm. But what we do well, we are going to double down in. And he said, I'll never forget these words, focusing, well, let's see, but now I'll butcher it. Focusing is about saying no. That's what, those were his words. Focusing is about saying no. Mm, and yeah, that, and that meant, it, how he was explaining it in his terms was, we're going to focus on what we do well, and we're going to kill it at those things. Mm. We're going to double down in those areas. Yeah. And we're going to get rid of all the things that we need to get rid of because uh, we were we were saying yes to everything. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that we're doing that now. We're actually bringing that into our life. Well, for many years now. And I just feel like that's such a tactical, important tip for success that when we hear other people's stories and the things that they're going through, and it's so nice to be able to just share our experiences with them and, and they're getting, it's almost like this, this fear that they have to say no. And then once they start saying no, they have this, this power back. Right. And this yeah, confidence. The power in saying no. It's, it's absolutely, it's, there is a power in saying no. some kind of confidence to say no. Cause it's very scary. I think at first I was always good at it because I grew up with a very, in a very European family. So that word was. <laughs> No. And in many, many, um, uh, many different situations. But I feel like I love watching people um, have the, uh, that authority, that, that power, and they have that power back. And, and you see the strength that it gives them and the connection that, that comes out of it with their spouse and their children and their family and their it's like you're protecting your empire. Yeah, and you need to because people are going to come and they're going to try to rip down your empire. Yes. Not on purpose necessarily, but no. they're going to ask you, oh, I need you to come. Can you come out here and, you know, fly out right. to Florida and spin, you know, a week out yeah. here? with it? And, and it, prob- it could be good for your business. It could mm-hmm. be something that – but sometimes you've got to – Put boundaries around your life right? so that you can go, look, I want to be, success is about being happy. Mm-hmm. Now, you there's people who can find success in, you know, making 100000 bucks a year or mm-hmm. $50,000 a year. And there's people that need to be making, you know, $50 million a year mm-hmm. to feel successful. But I, the real success comes from your relationships and your relationships specifically with your family. Right. And if you're not 
having success there, if you're mm-hmm. not having happiness there, mm-hmm. then you, you know, it's probably because you're saying yes too much Yeah. to things that you don't need to send yes to. And also setting ground rules. I remember in the beginning when this whole uh, niche of ours started, we were really the only ones that said, I'll do, and even in, in, uh, my career, um, in, in, on film, on set, you know, I, I'm not going to do it unless, unless I could bring the baby. I was nursing and I was a nurse. It was, it wasn't a six month thing. I thought, oh, it's six months, but it's not, it's years. And I was committed. I wanted my children to be healthy. I wanted them to have the stem cells through me. Like they, there's a lot of research that you got to do when you become a mom and then you, there's decisions that need to be made. And I love seeing this now that other people have the courage to, you know, they're going for a speaking engagement. They're bringing their babies. They're bringing their family. Yeah, we, they're bringing their we wives. We always made it a point to, we, we, we kind of said that, that we're going to bring our kids to yes. everything that we do. Photo shoot, my baby's coming. If not, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I can't do that cover. It's not that important. I mean, I don't, if it's not they, that they don't always have to be there, but like when you were doing the, when you were doing the interviews no, for, for the me, Maxim I'm, party and all I, that other stuff, I took, yeah. I, I stayed with Daniel. Right. And, and then what did I do? I ran out and I nursed in the car. Then I ran back and just, we were juggling and it was beautiful because you'd think that they would say no, but you'd be surprised if you stand your ground and say, this is, this is how it is in my family. I'm nursing right now. That is a hundred. This is one of my, this is my job as a mother. And if I, I don't, I mean, nothing is worth drying up. I cannot pump. There's some moms out there that can pump. It wouldn't work for me. It would cause problems. I'd get blocked. It would be painful. And I'm not going to go on. <laughs> I think all the women know what we're talking about, but I think that's like inside talk for parenting. I hope everybody. No, everybody's a, a parent, parent. They get it. They well, get it. Well, the, I mean, if you're a parent, if you're not a parent, thing, you might if you're not, not a parent yet, there's some challenges and I couldn't, uh, and those moms, you know, this is an, there was another podcast we were talking about, about the moms being, you know, having the mom guilt and stuff. And I just feel for the moms that, and I feel (laughs) there's a lot of moms that we have in our community that have changed that quit their jobs. I cannot leave. I can't just be with my baby for maternity leave. Like I had to think of something. I got creative and I started an online thing because I was not going back to that nine to five and I wasn't going to leave my baby. So all those women that are going through it, my heart goes out to you if you have to keep going and if you've been able to change careers Amazing, amazing, amazing! I love hearing your well, stories. Uh, that's why I think women, women businesses, mom businesses specifically, yeah. are being are so strong right now because yes. so many women are choosing. I think something about COVID got people riled up, <laughs> and uh, they were like, "Yeah, I want to be at home with mm-hmm. my family." And I yeah. wanna, so if there's a possibility, and now with the internet and mm-hmm. everything that you know that get you can creative do. don't be scared yep, everybody we all creative. have this 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 calling and god breathed this this life into you about your purpose and and sometimes you think you're on the right path and then you get this aha moment and a lot of times i feel like it's when you become a parent things change things change and don't I feel like the enemy wants you to feel like it's a negative thing, but you're ge- you've given birth not to that ch- not to just the child. You've given birth to a different person, mom, dad, both of you. You've become a different person now, and and there's so much success means so much more. Legacy means so much more. And, um, it's such a beautiful and powerful thing. So again, there, there's a different confidence when it comes to saying no, once you've become a parent. Yeah. I think, uh, the more, and it, it, it's 
be, it becomes more liberating the more you say no and you get good <laughs> yes. at it because you yes. start to just go, no, nah, I, I, I can't do that. I don't really have the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, usually I and spend the weekends with my family. You. They do. They and, really do. And yeah. you kind you, that's where you get your power. So when you say, yes. hey, I need to bring my family to that, mm-hmm. what are the accommodations you know, and you get someone who says, well, we're not really, you know, it's kind of going to be like, ah, well, it's probably not going to work for me then. Yeah. And oh, that's the other thing is it very clearly puts the spotlight on the relationships that need to be in your life and that don't need to be in your life. Yeah. I've got that few months makes, ago when somebody asked me VIP at a club and I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> you know, not only do I just do not want to be at a club. Oh, I don't um, either. That's I so just didn't want to do that. And you know, I knew that it would be, you know, what am I, what does that even look like? You know, I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to bring you guys there. So you guys, yeah. what are going to stay in the hotel? Why go to this thing real quick? And, you know, I hated uh, it. I hated it. Dun, 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 dun. No, I no. just, no, 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 no. no. I'm Did, not into it. And it. plus, here's the thing I don't have that temptation even because I gave my everything. I committed to my babies. I wanted them to have all the strength in the world for when I've seen illness. Okay. I've seen illness. I've lost people. And if I know the value of what I could do for my children, like I quit. I quit quit like and I wasn't even a drinker or an alcoholic so when I say I quit drinking it was I I wasn't an alcoholic but I would sometimes I wasn't anything like (laughs) that no 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 I would sometimes have some champagne pop a bottle very expensive one because I don't even like the taste but I was like oh a fancy bottle of champagne how Paris and you know it's fancy and and people would get impressed when a big fancy bottle of champagne would come out I don't really I I'm not a drinker so it was a no-brainer yes I'm going to nurse my child and I don't feel like drinking and um gosh the the weight came off like really quickly because I wasn't I was nursing and I wasn't doing the things I shouldn't do. And even in the days when I didn't have the kids, I would go to an event and I would leave. I just, I hated it. And I would only go VIP. I just don't want to be in the atmosphere. No, and I I don't, I don't like crowds really. So I'm always in the chained off VIP area, but then people are acting like fools. And I just, it wasn't that I'm like, really? Why is this so impressive? Like, it's boring. It's boring. I have to make an appearance. I'm getting paid to do this. And then I'm ghosting. I'm out. I would always sneak out. I just yeah. didn't like it. We were so. famous for sneaking out of clubs. Ghosting. We'd have to sh- go show up <laughs> yeah. to our party because we'd have some party in our well, name would, that we'd get paid for. have to do red carpet. And so once we got the- paid, we were like, okay, we got to be there for 30 minutes. We were like, there's 31 minutes. And we'd be heading out the door. We'd head <laughs> yes. to a movie theater and go watch a movie, yeah. meet Charles and Scrape. Yeah. And uh, it was just, yeah, it just never... I mean, there's been some times where, you know, you had some good times there and you're hang- hanging out with people that you liked. Yeah. Um, but overall, you look back and sometimes like, oh, I don't miss that at no, all. No, I don't. I don't miss it. I don't miss it. I don't like it. And yeah. So, I mean, those decisions are very, very, very easy for me. Yeah. But when it has to do with, as I said, the traveling Um, with my family, speaking events, business events, those kind of things where I'm helping other families, other mothers, and just helping people step into this new role that is such a blessing. And I, I see sometimes people struggling with it. They're struggling. They have, and and our fathers too, they're struggling and they don't want to be seen as a father sometimes. But then when they see these incredible entrepreneurial fathers that that take their job as a father, as a business builder, as a leader, as a protector of their family, then they're like, dude, I'm in the coolest place of my life. 
But well, I think that's why you so need so careful. many good examples you need out there. Good and there's a lot of good people coming out now. Because they can pull you now. out and you can fall into that midlife crisis. And then you're sitting there with your head in your hands going, what have I done? I've seen that side of the story too. And there's a lot of people going through that right now. Women too. Women too that have fallen off and, and thought that they didn't want to be mothers and they made big mistakes and... And you can't, you can't go back. You can't go back. Yeah, guys, you got to protect your time, protect who you are, protect your family. Yeah. No is so powerful that once you really In just... In so many ways, you, yes. I think if you, it, you know, I think it should almost be a plaque on everybody's door because us as entrepreneurs, <laughs> we're such, you know, we're such as suckers for, for yeah. shiny object syndrome. Just because we want to build great things. We love building great things. We want Mm -hmm. to build the next Amazon. We want, you know, there's always great ideas coming at you. But I think that's when you get very clear about what you want to do in life and you say, this is what I'm going to do. And everything that is not a part of that circle that fits outside of that circle, you need to clear the board and say no to. And it becomes a lot easier when you create that down on paper mm-hmm. and, you're, and you get very clear about what works and what doesn't. So um, I think that we all need to work on that. I can get better at that. There's still things that mm-hmm. I've said yes to that I'm like, oh, I should have just said no to that. Um, but I'm, and I you know, we're always it. I feel fighting like with our inner these selves. These last couple of months we've been, you know, there's just been, there's just been a lot, like a lot of stuff. Um, there's just been a lot of stuff and I can, I can feel the exhaustion. I feel the exhaustion. Um, you're probably feeling it too. And I just feel it was just a really good topic to remind, to remind people you got to say no. Got to say no. Any other important parts you wanted departing knowledge that you want to leave with, with everybody, the audience? I don't, I don't, I mean, no, it's very simple, guys. Mm-hmm. We, we all know that sometimes it's going to help with burnout. Yes to it's going to help with overcommitment and it's going to help with overall happiness for yourself and your family. And, uh, oh, and, and one of the actionable tips, and this is, you know, obvious, but pick one night, start with one evening a a week where absolutely no work calls, no emails, no meetings allowed. Just start with one evening a week. Um, and this is for the people that are still in the grunt stages of their business, the building, but try to just start with one day a week where it's none of that, none of that. And it's, it's going to, it's going to save you a lot in your mental health and uh, all of it, all of the above. And your marriage. Yeah. Yeah. And know that the enemy hates happy marriages Yeah, and we'll come after it in every way possible. And it Mm -hmm. will try to ruin your business, make you unhappy, do things that, you know, take you away from your family. And so always be on the lookout for that. Sometimes it, it's disguised in, yeah, I was just in gonna sheep, say it's in you know, uh, in sheep's clothing. Yeah. So be careful, watch out, and <laughs> use no, it's powerful. We thank you guys for tuning in to this week's episode of the Pretty and Pug podcast. Wait, wait, remember how we were talking about this? And I just want to share it. Maybe someone needs to hear it. it it's Ecclesiastes 4, 6. Better one handful with tranquil- tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Guys, this just reminds us that less is more when it comes to the things we commit to. It's better to do fewer things well and with peace than overall to to fill our schedules with the things that leave us exhausted. I just thought that was really important to add that because we were talking about this, but there it is in the the good book. You guys heard it here. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to this week's Pretty and Punk podcast. And yeah, that's another great scripture. And of course, from the best book in the world, yes. the Bible. God and, bless you guys. And we we'll love see you, you guys next week. Say no. Just say no. Thank you for listening to the Pretty and Punk podcast. We hope you enjoyed. God bless. Love you. Thank you for choosing. Listen to us this week.
please subscribe, review, and comment, and have the best week. God bless. You need parts? O'Reilly Auto Parts has parts. Need them fast? We've got fast. No matter what you need, we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it. Product availability. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly.